accumulated $30 trillion in debt. Interest payments have been fairly low over the past decade or so. Interest payments are about, you know, one, two, two and a half percent. But now interest rates are rising. Even at the low interest rates, our interest rate that we pay each year has grown to about 300 billion a year. So 300 billion a year, and people say, well, there's a debt ceiling. If the debt ceiling doesn't come up, we'll default, and Wall Street will become hysterical, and there'll be a collapse of the stock market. Well, there doesn't need to be. Nobody really is for spreading discalm or spreading uh, you know, chaos among the marketplace. We all want the marketplace to be calm. How could we calm the marketplace? What we would say to the marketplace is, we'll pay our bills. We're not going to default on our currency. And the way you can pay for your bills is pay for it with income. We bring in $3.8 trillion a year in tax revenue. The interest payment is $300 billion. It's less than we bring in in one month. So the annual payment on interest is less than what we bring in in tax revenue in one month. Why can't we pay the interest? Why would we ever not pay the interest on our debt? Why? Because we're overdrawn and because all the rest of the spending is crowded out by the interest. We've got plenty of money to pay for the interest. We just don't have enough left to pay for uh, the cocaine studies with uh, Japanese quail. That's a, you know, about a million bucks. You say, ah, it's only a million bucks. Well, they studied Japanese quail to see whether or not Japanese quail on cocaine to see if they're more sexually promiscuous. How did we get to a $30 trillion debt? Because there's studies like that littered throughout the budget. In fact, the group that does these studies, the National Science Foundation, we just increased their budget by two-thirds. Mostly Democrats, but once again, many of the big government Republicans voted for this too. So we've exploded the National Science Foundation. Now, was there any warning that the National Science Foundation was one of the most wasteful parts of our government? Well, yeah, since 1972, there was a Congress or a senator at the time named William Proxmire. He was a conservative or maverick Democrat from the Midwest, and he started an award. He called it the uh, Golden Fleece Award. And the first award he gave was for a study from the National Science Foundation. It was over a study that was $50,000. That was when $50,000 was a lot of money. And the study was to see what makes people happy. Really? And people were aghast that we were spending $50,000 on it. And he complained. He gave them a, a booby prize, an award, the Golden Fleece Award. And lo and behold, we're still doing it. The same organization last year did a million and a half dollar study that if you take a selfie of yourself while smiling and then look at the selfie later on, does it make you happy? That cost a million and a half bucks. Why do people like each other? Why do people fall in love? These aren't studies for taxpayer dollars, but these are small ticket items. They say, oh, you can never balance the budget on that. Well, what about $70 million spent on a hotel in Kabul that the contractor ran off with the money and it was never built? What about a $48 million gas station? No, strike that, natural gas gas station in a remote area of Afghanistan. Well, very few of anybody in the United States has a car that runs on natural gas. Why was, the, why was the U.S. government building a natural gas gas station in Afghanistan? Because we've gone woke on the green climate. We are for the green climate. We've got to do, we got to combat climate change and reduce the carbon footprint of Afghanistan. Really? I thought the military was supposed to kill the enemies, defend the country. But we're reducing the carbon footprint in Afghanistan. Somebody put up, I think it was Rod Dreyer put up this the other day, it was a little video clip, and it was in, in, tragic, but somewhat, somewhat uh, hilarious in its tragicness. He said, this is when we lost the Afghan war. And it had a picture of a, a urinal. I think it was Marcel Duchamp was some Dadaist artist back in like 1917, and I guess he thought it would be really hilarious to put a male urinal in a museum and call it art. And I don't know if it was really art or if it was a joke, but the thing is, is there we're having these Afghan men and women in robes and veils and everything studying Dadaist art, a male urinal, and asking them what they thought of this. And the, you could see a couple of the women just going and just sort of shaking their head with utter incomprehension. But when, when we're spending money sending PhDs over to Afghanistan to teach Dadaist art about that a male urinal is somehow art, 
I think that's why some of them think that we're actually the culture that's in decay, not them. But the thing is, is we are spending money right and left. The right spends it on military adventure. The left spends it on welfare. And the compromise that always happens around here is right comes together with left, and they all agree to, well, you know, we might as well just spend it on both. 